Hello everyone, this workshop is part of a series of Mindscape activities that connects people to nature through art. Mindscape is a Y Valley area of outstanding natural beauty and art space significant project. It's part of the Foresters Forest, the National Lottery Heritage Fund and the Landscape Partnership Programme. Each of the YouTube clips is accompanied by a step-by-step -step activity guide that you can download from the Art Space Sintery website. Hello and welcome to the Mindscape Activities. Uh, this session we're going to look at natural pigment earth paints with the idea of making our own paints using colours from the landscape and we're going to apply them to found pieces of wood or pieces of driftwood to get these fantastic, almost Aboriginal style pieces of artwork. Now, when you're out and about in the forest or the, the countryside somewhere, have a look at the ground around you, and in particular, the different colours of earth. Just looking at this little tray here, we've got a real multitude of colours, from our yellow ochres, our red ochres, beautiful colour, uh, the greys, but also we've got a bit of chalk for our white, and some charcoal for black. And you can get a really nice, harmonious palette of colours. Now, for your information, paints, the colours are derived from a variety of different sources. Um, things like lapis lazuli, which is a semi-precious stone comes from Afghanistan, was crushed and used to make the very common ultramarine blue. There's my cat again. Um, and lamp black, you've probably heard of that colour, that comes from soot from the old oil lamps. Uh, carmine red was uh, crushed beetles. People still use that for cooking and ingredients for, for colouring these days. And then you've got your ochre colours. Uh, things like burnt sienna as well, raw, raw sienna. Uh, earth colours, rock colours, literally dirt cheap. Wow. Now, um, materials that we're going to use, other than the actual uh, pigments themselves, we're going to use, well, normally a pestle and mortar. Uh, I'm improvising at the moment. This is actually a singing bowl, but um, we're in the middle of the COVID lockdown, so I'm making do with what I've got. Uh, a little tub of water so I can pour out and uh, get the right consistency uh, for my paints. Um, obviously a few brushes and a palette to collect all the paints in. And um, a little bit of PVA glue. We're going to use that just to act as a binder to keep all the, the, the pigment together so it doesn't just fall away into dust once we've painted it. So the first step is to take some of your natural earth pigment and place it into your pestle and mortar. I've got this lovely yellow ochre colour at the moment. Um, if you're doing a range of these uh, activities you can always use the same pestle and mortars for the natural berry inks as well. So I place my pigment into the bowl and I'm going to start gently grinding down the pigment to create a nice fine powder, a bit like hot chocolate powder. And when you're doing this, you may come across a few little bits of grit, a few stones. Um, maybe a couple of leaves or a couple of roots and you can always just pull those out. Okay. Now I recommend you spend a good few minutes crushing this down because the finer the pigment you can achieve the better or stronger your colour is going to be. Okay. So. I'll spend a few minutes just grinding this down.
So, I finished grinding down this yellow ochre colour and um, it's now just a case of pouring that gently into, in this case, a little palette and adding a tiny little spot of PVA and water. As I say, this will just act as a little binder and there's no exact formula here. As you can see, I'm putting in a very small amount for that particular amount of pigment. Now, I've got a little pouring lip on this, so I should be able to just gradually add the water in so I don't overdo it all in one go. Okay, a little bit more. The idea is to get your paint mixed up to a consistency of something like single cream. Um, these paints work better if um, they're slightly thicker. You wouldn't be able to use them in the same way as, say, watercolours. So again, spend a little while just giving that a good mix and that will help just distribute all those lumps, hopefully dissolve everything in the water in the PVA. And if you can see that, but we've got ourselves quite a nice looking yellow ochre. So I need to do that for the other colours now. So I'll spend a bit of time processing those until we've got a full palette. So I've mixed up all the different colours now. I've got myself a, a red and yellow ochre. Uh, lovely grey and the black and white. With the white, with the chalk, I did actually use a tiny little toffee hammer just to break down uh, the bits of chalk so it was easier to grind in the pestle and mortar. They've all got the same consistency of single cream now, so really we're ready to paint. I'm going to start on this large bit of driftwood. I thought it would be quite a nice idea to use something like this as a group project, maybe several people working on one piece of wood. Uh, when it's finished, you could go out into a garden, maybe indoors somewhere. It could be that you just use one single piece of wood per person. The choice is yours. So, let's start with one of these colors. So I've gone straight for black. And I'm using quite an old brush and as I apply the paint I'm just making sure it gets in all the little nooks and crannies. Can you see that from that side? Um, I'm going to make sure as it's just me working on my own with one brush that I completely clean the brush each time so it doesn't muddy the other colours. I just have a tiny little gap in between as well. When the colours dry, you get a really nice, dense, flat quality. Red. And when these colours are dried, you could paint on top of them. For example, the white stripe could have some black dots or any other colour. Just be creative in the, the patterns that you apply. If you weren't happy with your first design, you could always wash it off or turn it over and start again. Well, 
I think those colours look great. And with a bit more time, that could turn into a really nice little bit of earth pigment artwork. Mm -hmm.